so honored today to be able to sit down with Bishop Mark McDonald, the Anglican Church of Canada's first national Indigenous Bishop. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. You've been in this role for the Anglican Church for almost a decade now. How significant was it for them to appoint the first national Indigenous Bishop? Well, it was unprecedented. Uh, the elders had been calling for it for over 50 years, but um, the church was a little slow in response. But uh, it, it really was a, a, a transformational uh, decision on the part of the church to make this, this, this position. What do you think it meant to indigenous people across this country? Well, I, I would meet people and I was, I was overwhelmed because so many people saw this as, as a recognition of their identity within the life of the church. Mm. And, and particularly uh, that, that was happening as the residential schools revelations were, were happening. It was a very significant thing, especially for our elders. I think about this issue of residential schools, you know, it's always, it's tough for us as a community of faith to talk about our faith in an Indigenous context sometimes mm -hmm. because of the history of abuse that's happened. And then I look at you and you represent both sides of that issue. You, you are both Indigenous mm -hmm. and you are Anglican, mm -hmm. which was one of the churches that, that was part of the school system. You know, do you ever, do you feel like that's a bridge or, or do you feel like it's a difficulty? Oh, I, I feel like it's a bridge, yes. I, I'm the uh, grandson of a residential school survivor. Wow. And, and uh, so I have, I have a, uh, an intimate and personal relationship to some of the pain that's involved. So I, I feel that I'm able to speak from that experience as well as, as an experience of the long-time development of indigenous Christianity, which is really quite apart from the institutional church. Mm. Did you have to come to peace within yourself, with the church? Yes, yes, and, and th that's a process that's ongoing, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, part of your role at the time is educating people about, as you said, Indigenous Christianity and, and why it's different and why it has to be different, because we're so unaware of the cultural things that have seeped into our faith right. that have nothing to do, actually, exactly. with our faith. Exactly, yeah, so, very, so very good point. How tough is that, are those conversations? Well, <laughs> it, because our culture is almost like fish living in water, you know, it's, 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 it's very difficult to be aware of your own cultural lenses and biases. So it's difficult. People will, people sometimes ask me, uh, are you afraid that there'll be uh, 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 that the culture will seep into the faith and corrupt the faith. And I'll say, I sure am. Have you been to Walmart lately and seen what, what people are going through? Meaning that um, I see there are a lot of cultural influences on Christians today that, uh, that are m more broad than just the, the cultural influences that come upon indigenous people. It's yeah. so true. Yes. You know, you think about this journey of healing that Indigenous people in Canada have been on. Uh, the apology in 2008 is, could, could be a step depending on your perspective. Mm -hmm. How did you see that received by people when former, Stephen, former Prime Minister Stephen Harper made that apology? I was there, um, not directly in the room, but in, a, in an adjacent room with, with it on screen. And I, I was surrounded by elders. And all I can say is that many of them had a physical reaction to it. Um, you, could, you could hear them kind of sigh and gasp and, and uh, one elder was holding pictures of some of the people she had gone to school with and was touching their faces mm. as, as, as the apology was given. It was a, a really remarkable, a remarkable thing. Do you feel that, you know, I know there's been some criticism about the apology that it wasn't followed with enough action on treaty issues and um, some of the standards of living that happen in Indigenous communities today, but do you feel that it, it, it was part of that healing, that it did launch healing in yes, people? Yes, I, I think, you, you know, um, I, I, like a lot of other people, was disappointed by the follow-up, follow but it, it was, uh, Ellie Wiesel, once said that words in, in certain instances have the, uh, have the same kind of grace as deeds. And, and, I, and I thought of that when, when the apology was given because of the power, the, the power of that apology. Uh, Chief Elijah Harbour came up to me afterwards and he said, we're now free. We're free to become what God has meant us to be. I think when you're a person who was in residential schools, you were told that everything about you and your culture is wrong. Mm. 
And, and so you grow up fighting that lie, but somehow believing it in your, the core of your being mm. to have the government say, a powerful government say, we were wrong to try to yeah. tell you that. That's, yeah. that's it, right? You yes. can get your identity back. Very important, very important. Well, we want to continue this conversation. When we come back, young people across the North are taking their lives at unprecedented rates. What is driving the epidemic? Stay tuned. <laughs> 